you in a cuff. What was, you were only cuffed on one wrist. One wrist, yeah. What was happening to the other part of the handcuff? Okay, he had it in his hand. He was holding it? Holding that in the wrist, yeah. Where was the knife, in the other hand? Uh, the knife was like, he had here, the knife was in his hand, he had it on me like this. But the record reflect he was holding his, the knife would, in his right hand as he showed it, holding the cuff in his left hand, is that right? right. And your left hand is cuffed? Yeah, right. Where do you have the knife? What kind of a knife was it? It was like a military knife, a machete of some type. Yep. He had lower right up under my rib cage, you know. Like so in he the had back, it, somewhere in the back here. He had it pointed at your rib cage. Yeah. Did you feel it? Touch yeah, it? he he had it on me. He had it against my body. What happened? What was going through your mind the moment that happened? When you realized you had a knife at your side and a handcuff on your hand, what did you think? I think like you know what's going on. You know, this guy is so nice, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like he was pulling knives and handcuffs and all on me. You know. What'd you do? What'd you say to him? I asked him what the problem was, you know, that it's not necessary to do this, you know. What'd he say? Uh, he told me at that point if I wouldn't do what he said, he would kill me, yeah. Now, tell us about his demeanor at the time that you look at him and you say, what's going on? You don't have to do this. What happens to Mr. Dahmer? What's he like? It's like not the same person that we met at Grand Avenue Mall. How does he different? His face structure seemed different. You know, his body structure is like it wasn't him anymore, you know? It's like it was a totally different guy there. So he, he told you if you didn't do what he told you to do, he'd hurt you? He'd hurt me. What'd you do? What happened? Tell us what happened step yeah. by step as best and, you can remember. And then all of a sudden he kind of calms down, you know? And then he said he has a key in the bedroom, so we proceed to the bedroom. The key to the handcuffs? Right. Yeah. So you believed he was going to take him off? Yeah. At that point, I had to go along with this guy, you know? And then if I had to find out, so I walked back there with him. He kind of guides me back there, you know? Guides you back with the cuff and the knife? Yeah, right. And you go into the bedroom? Right. What do you see in the bedroom? Uh, a big, about 50, 60 gallon drum barrel, whatever. Do you ever see a 50, 60 drum barrel in anybody's bedroom no. before? Not at all. Do you have any idea? Did you ask him what it was? No. At that point, I asked no questions at that time. Yeah. Was there a bed in that room? Yes. How was the bed? Was it made, unmade? What did it what was un, It was unmade. What, what did you see on the bed, if anything? Something like a stain of whatever yeah, on the bed. What did you think it was? At that point in time, I wasn't sure. Okay. What did you do when you got in the bedroom as he's holding on to the cuff and the knife? What did you do? I'm um, studying this talking, trying to be friends with him. You know. Did you remain standing? Did you sit down? Oh, he made me sit down at that point. We both sit on the bed. Right. Was it at the foot of the bed, side of the bed, head uh, of the bed? Maybe halfway between. Did that room have a TV set in it? Yes. Was there anything going on on the TV? Yeah, the Exorcist movies was playing at that time. There was an Exorcist movie on? Yeah. You know which one of them? Uh, the name, I'm not sure. I think it's three. I'm not sure which one. Right. So there was a movie. Did you know it to be part of television or VCR? Uh, VCR, normally that's not on regular television, so I thought it was VCR. You knew there was a movie show. Right. Did you see him put it on, or was it on? No. When we first got into the apartment, he went through the back, to the back bedroom. Maybe he put it on then, I'm not sure. Okay. And then what happened? You're both sitting on the bed? Yes. Are you still in handcuffs? Yes. Is he holding the handcuff? Right. Do you still have the knife? Right. Is it pointed at your side, as you've told us before? Right. You trying to be cool? Very much so. You're not, a, you're not fighting with him? No. Not What's at your all. intention? What are you planning on doing? Getting away. I was contemplating on at a point, jumping out the window. You know, I was basically talking with this person, trying to let him know I was his friend. Yeah. As you were sitting there on the bed, when he had you by the handcuff and a knife at your side, at that time, which would have been maybe 7 o'clock? Something like that. What impression was made upon your mind by the conduct, action, manner, expression, and conversation that you observed of Mr. Dahmer? His frame of mind is what you want to know, right? Okay, he acted. At times, he would go through, like, different changes with me, you know? One Tell minute, us about that. One minute, he's, like, nice. Then he was telling he didn't want people to leave him or abandon him things of this nature, you know? Yeah. 
Well, what did you think about him as a person? What impression was made on your mind of this fellow that you're dealing with here? Yeah, that at times he wasn't himself, and then at times he was, was like a nice guy, you know? He would come and go different times, you know, throughout the whole time. Then he would like sit, being quiet at times, watching a movie, he wanted me to watch the movie, you know, and just doing a little tanning sounds, you know. Did you observe him watching the movie and how he would react to the movie? Right, he would like just start rocking back and forth when he, you know, certain parts of the movie or whatever. You have to say, what did he say, Madam? He was like chanting at certain times and rocking back and forth, right? Tell us about his chanting. What was that all about? Uh, I'm not even sure, sir, but it was just like, I can't tell you the words. I couldn't understand what he was saying at that time. Can you mimic him? How it sounded? It was like a slow slur, like, mmm, some of that nature, some close like that, I'm not sure. Did it keep on for a period of time? Off and on throughout the ordeal. And how about the, the movement back and forth? How, how was that being effectuated? Uh, just like back and forth, he would do it every now and then. You know? Just as you are rocking in right, your chair. Like this. Yeah. And chanting. And chanting. Was there any parts of the movie that was going on that you saw that he said anything about? It was like the part about the preacher that used to be a preacher that had got possessed and that uh, and that uh, it would seem like he was like interested in that part. That part had his attention more than anything. You know? well, tell us about what you mean by that. What impressions were made upon your mind when this was going on as to had his attention? How, would he, how did he appear to you? And appear like like it was like he wanted to mimic it or be like that part, you know, being demonized or whatever in that nature. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed you. Yeah, like he wanted that, that type of movie, that part, certain parts of that part interested him, you know. It was like he changed with it at times. Then he would get more aggressive, try to get me to handcuff myself, both hands. And he's told me it made him feel more dominant at that time. Okay, did you and he move off of the bed at any time? Yes, he wanted me to lay flat down, stomach down on the floor at that time. Did you at any time go to the bathroom, use the washroom, prior to the time that he asked you to lay down on the floor? No. All right, tell us what happened when, how did that happen, that he told you to lay down on the floor? You know, he told me to lay down face down, put both of my hands behind my back, because he got, he changed again at that point, like he got more aggressive at that time. Okay, you now, know. but tell us, tell us, uh, did he still have the knife out? Yes, he still had the knife with him. And what did you do? Okay, I kind of like laid on my sides for some reason. I guess God told me not to lay flat down or let this person handcuff me, so I didn't. So you were trying to stop that from happening, but you right. got down on the floor. Right. What did he do? He kind of laid across me, put his head across my chest at that point. And what was he doing with his head? Pardon me? What did it appear to you he was doing with his head? What was he trying to do? Like he was listening to my heart, because at a point he told me he was going to eat my heart at that point. He said he was going to eat your heart? Yes, that's correct. Did he still have the knife? Yeah. Where was the knife pointed? When I was on the floor, he had it pointed at my groin area at that time. One knife? He had several, and then he slipped when I managed to slide one underneath the bed. And I guess during a point of time through an ordeal, he didn't know where the knife was, so I didn't know if he felt that was a threat or not. So he still had a knife, you're on the floor. How long does he lay on top of you trying to hear your heart as you've described it? Maybe a minute, minute and a half. And then what, what did you do then? I knew something was about to happen, so I suggested that I go to the bathroom. I had to use the bathroom at that time. And what did he do? He kind of guided me to the bathroom. So when you say a guy, did you still had hold of your handcuff? Yes. And you went to the bathroom? Right. Did you urinate? Yeah. Were you able to u utilize your own zipper, or did he touch you at all? Touched me in no way. Didn't attempt to look, he just held me in back. You know. so, so in other words, he didn't try to look at what your penis looked like or anything? Not at like all. That. So after urinating, did you think that you were going to be the victim of did he ask to, to, to engage in any homosexual acts with you? None whatsoever. Okay, so now you leave the bathroom and what happens? Okay, then we go back into the bedroom. You know. It was like different time spans. We were talking about him leaving his, losing his job. Then he would come to the person that I was first with, you know. And then at certain points he would change. You know, at first he was talking, telling me about 
how people didn't care for him and things of this nature. And I was trying to comfort him, letting him know that I was a friend, you know, that I wasn't going to try to run away from him or nothing like that. You were being cool. I guess God, you can say that because I had no control. I was just, it was just, I don't know. Did this continue on for a long period of time during the night? Yes, apparently so. Time seemed to, I don't know. But I stayed in there that long, so it had to be going on throughout the whole ordeal, which it was. So time just, it happened like that. And all this time you're trying to hold him down. Yeah, certain from, points, from, right. Um, how often would he go in and out of these moods? Uh, sir, uh, the time spans, I couldn't really tell you. But like he would like, I guess if you want to put it together in time, every 30 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that, you know. And then he would have moods of being just silent. You know, and I wouldn't say anything, try to provoke him or say the wrong thing. I would be silent with him. Okay. So you just let him be alone. Did you, was, it, was that movie on the whole time, a long time? It was on a pretty good period of time, yeah. And when it went off, I couldn't tell you. Did he continue to chant from time to time? Yes, it happened several times throughout the ordeal. Now, when he would watch the movie, did you notice when he would go into this thing that you told us where he would really become fixed on the movie screen? What was happening? How often would that happen? Throughout the movie, maybe every 15 or 20 minutes, and then he would turn around and try to ask me to put both of my hands behind my back, and I wouldn't, you know, do it. I would talk to him. I'd tell him, you can trust me. You know, you don't have to do this, and that would calm him down a little bit. You he know? had the knife the whole time. Right. He's watching the movie, and he becomes very interested in the movie. Right. You don't do anything. Just sit there. Just sit there and be quiet. And then he would start conversation with you again. Yeah, he was like, like, you're going to have to do this and that. You know, then he told me at a point I was going to have to kill him or he, either he was going to have to kill me at one point. Were you and he drinking during this time? No. So he wasn't running out, bringing you out and getting beers and coming no, back? No, I would have been out the window at that point. Sure. If he would have. Did he, when he was fixed, I'm trying to get some words to understand, was he intoxicated? I, 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 he had been drinking, but as far as being intoxicated, he was not staggering or anything of that nature. But he you know that to. some people, when they have too much to drink, change their moods. Was that the kind of mood changes he was having or a different kind of mood no, change? I think this was like more of an inner mood change than an alcoholic mood change. What kind of mood? It's like inner mood. Um, yeah, person change, not not alcohol change. What did you think about this guy? What what were you? What was going through your mind as to who you were sitting next to, who was doing all these things? A bizarre individual, someone that was very confused at this time. Now there came a time when you went to the washroom again. Right, I suggested, yeah, because he had started getting aggressive a little bit again. I suggested to go to the bathroom. He let me stay in there by myself while he stayed outside the door at that time. And what happened then? And then I told him, well, I, I was contemplating. I was asking God, shall I make my move now? And I was going to just jump out the window. But when I got out, for some reason, I asked, could I have another beer? Yeah. And what did he do? And he, he reaches over, he guides me over and reaches in and get a beer. He still got you on the cuff. Yeah. And then he tells me, I tell him, uh, I want to sit in the front because it's an air conditioner. And I was just going to try to jump out the window or go for the door or whatever. And because the back bedroom didn't have an air conditioner, only in the front. So I suggested we sit on the couch. I had unbuttoned my shirt to try to make him feel more at ease. And then, and then I just sat on the couch like, and he just start going out of himself again. Yeah. Going out of himself? Yeah, he was like paying me no attention at that time. Like yeah. he wasn't there? He was, yeah, he started the chanting again and it's like just sitting there, you know. And then I just, for some reason, I said, well, I need to go to the bathroom again. And he didn't follow me at that point. So I reached up, I got up, and then I got hit him and I ran out. So you hit him? Right. Did you have any other belongings there? Yeah, I have my bag right there at the end of the couch. I sit in exactly the same place that I sit when I went in there. So when you got up, he let go of your cuff to let you go to the bathroom again? Uh, he didn't even, he just like, just let me stay there. I was going to go for the window. At that point, he didn't even have the cuff. It's like I wasn't even there anymore. Yeah. And when you saw that, what'd you do? Mm -hmm. I just <laughs> seized the opportunity. I said, well, at least I'm going to die trying. I'm not just going to sit here, you know. What'd you do, son? Uh, I hit him I, and I ran towards the door and he like was right there, tried to grab me, get me back in there. And what happened? 
then I made it outside. So he wasn't able to bring you back bring in? Bring me back in there, no. He tried. He tried. 